We all have a vague sense that gambling can be addictive, but people's views vary widely on how true this is. After all, surely you could gamble responsibly if you just had enough self-restraint, right? Maybe you think some people just have addictive personalities and that you wouldn't be susceptible to the tricks we know casinos and other forms of gambling employ in order to keep people coming back for more. After all, if you know about the tricks, you should be able to avoid them. On the other hand, we've all heard of people who, try as they might, haven't been able to withstand the allure of the gambling table, the slot machines, or the races. We know of people who have ruined their lives because they just couldn't stop. The truth is that while some people are perhaps more susceptible than others, casinos are playing on some deep hard wiring in the human brain in order to catch and keep you playing. Even if we go into it knowing things are rigged against us, our brains and bodies tell us that this time we might just hit that big jackpot or pick the right sports team to win it all. There are some deeply ingrained reasons for this, which is why a gambling addiction can be so incredibly hard to break. There are multiple forms of gambling, from fantasy sports, online poker tournaments, sports betting through mobile applications, and horse racing, to name a few. All of these rely on different forms or methods of placing the bet, but they all affect your brain in the same way. But no matter what kind of gambling you're engaged with, there are common denominators. Gambling triggers a sense of thrill in your brain. It taps directly to the brain's reward system and the pleasure centers, which release dopamine through the body. This gives someone who's gambling a tremendous feeling of ecstasy, a kind of high, even as they're taking potentially dangerous or unhealthy risks. Because the gambler never knows when the reward is going to occur, the brain keeps chasing the high, knowing that the pleasure hit is going to come at any moment. Although some people do have a genetic or psychological or even learned predisposition to reward-seeking behavior and impulsivity, the way professional gambling is structured taps into things which we are all susceptible. To give you a better idea of how this works and the many aspects of how our brains are triggered from gambling, we're going to deep dive into one particular area of the gambling industry which has made an art of understanding just what keeps people seeking that reward and how to keep them playing. Let's look at casinos. Anyone who's been to Las Vegas is familiar with the rush of excitement as you enter one of the famous glitzy gambling casinos like the Bellagio or Caesars Palace. You've probably also gone into these casinos with a feeling of confidence and excitement, ready to win big, and then quit while you're ahead. But somehow, it never quite turns out like that. So often, you find yourself still at the machine late into the night, or it's an early morning by this time, still playing, still trying to win. There's no accident to any of this. The people who design and manage casinos have studied the psychology of the human brain and exactly how people think, from social behavior to inhibitions to neuroscience, and there are a number of very deliberate tricks casinos are using to keep you playing. Consider what an exciting physical space the casino is, an environment with attractive lighting, plush carpets, beautiful bartenders, and bright, attention-grabbing slot machines and tables to play at. The physical design of a casino is meant to keep you stimulated. Likewise, the music creates an atmosphere of excitement, not to mention the constant sounds of the machines, coins pouring out of them, or all kinds of distracting noises when you win even a small amount of money. All this energy gives you a sense of anticipation that something is about to happen, and the casino suggests that something is going to be you winning the next jackpot. You can almost feel it. But the big wins you're seeing all around you are an illusion, a trick of theatrics on the part of the casino, guaranteed to keep you chasing the mirage of the win you think you see. Let's start by looking at the most of what casinos make, money. In the meantime, 
you're not playing with real money. Well, you are. It just doesn't feel like that. You know how you can splurge on fancy properties and monopoly because you know the brightly colored cash just isn't real? Casinos set you up to experience the same sensation by making you exchange your cash for chips. They're colored bright and pleasing to touch. They make a satisfying sound when being stacked or sliding out into the middle of the table on a big bet. They're fun objects to interact with. And because of this, because they look and feel so different to actual money, your brain separates them from the reality of cash and is much more lenient with them than you would ever be if you were having to play with actual money. But how do casinos trick you into spending so much money? Have you ever lost track of time in a casino? It's not an accident that people will find they've been playing for hours when they felt like they were there for just a few minutes. The job of the casino is to keep people playing. If you start to get the sense that you've been there too long or ought to be doing something else, you stop to lose complete focus on the game and this isn't what the casino wants. Your brain is hardwired to acknowledge and react to the passage of time, so if you want to see the passage of time, you're much more likely to keep your gaming sessions short. Casinos essentially make time stand still, and people's hands are busy, so they don't tend to look at their phones or keep track of time either. The absence of clocks is one of the very effective psychological tricks casinos play to keep you playing. Similarly, casinos don't typically have windows because windows are great for being able to give you a sense of what time it is. Beyond the fact that you might get distracted by something outside and that any distractions keep you from playing, windows allow you to have a sense of the passage of time. If you see the sun coming up, you might guess that you need to tear yourself away and go back to sleep. The stimulation of the casino, which to a degree is overriding your circadian rhythms, would break down if you could look outside and decide that you need to go back to bed. With that being said, many casinos, especially if you play often or spend big, will put you up for free. And given how beautiful some of these hotels are, that's no small invitation. You might even have free meals rolled into your package, which means you actually never really need to leave the building at all. You can stay in the casino later, knowing that you don't have to worry about finding cabs or navigating your exhausted way home. It'll only take you five minutes to get back to the comfort of your own room. Additionally, when you're given the hotel room as part of the package, it subconsciously gives you the feeling of being rich, abundant. You deserve to be treated like a VIP, so you convince yourself you're allowed to spend a few days living like a VIP. And that often means you give yourself permission to spend more money than you might do otherwise. And while we're on the subject of what you get for free, it's no accident either The casinos will provide you with a free round of drinks, or several. In fact, food, drink, everything you need comes to you, so you never have to leave the table, which means your gambling is never interrupted. And the longer it goes on without interruption, the more difficult it is to stop and reset. But there's a more insidious game at play, which makes it in the best interest of the casino to supply you with drinks. The more alcohol someone has had, the more likely they are to lose their inhibitions, to take big chances, to make strategic mistakes, and even bad choices. The casino may be buying your drinks, but you'll be guaranteed to be spending more. But what is it about those flashy lights and loud noises that make a slot machine so enticing? Well, believe it or not, slot machines in particular are designed to give you lots of positive feedback. They're triggering all the pleasure centers in your brain, reaffirming your choices, encouraging you to take chances, and rewarding you for not losing. In fact, you're often not even winning any money at all. The machine is just giving your own money back and celebrating it as if it's a win, thereby encouraging your brain to take more chances and win, or at least not lose, more. So at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, how do you have enough self-control to stop? Casinos are famously and intentionally designed like a maze. 
if you're looking for the exit, or even the restroom, you're going to have to maneuver your way past various kinds of other exciting games and tables in order to get there. Your brain gets intrigued, engages, and the next thing you know, you've been playing the new machine for two hours and never did make it to the front door. Even though it doesn't make sense to continue chasing a losing bet with an even bigger bet, sunk cost fallacy, anyone? Casinos often incentivize people to take chances and bet big by offering rewards points for every dollar spent. These points can be spent for shows, meals, or rooms in the same casino. So you have the feeling that you're winning even though what you've actually done is play out an incredible amount of money for a comparatively little reward. All in all, casinos have mastered the art of tapping into your psychological and physical rhythms and knowing how to increase the dopamine hits your brain gets from gambling. The world of the casino can be seductive, just like so many other forms of gambling. It's stimulating, exciting, satisfying, but just remember, at the end of the day, the house always wins. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And for more interesting videos like this, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, turn on notifications, and most importantly, share. Until then, we will see you soon in the next video.